Mark Velvet, Super Training Gym, Super Training Gym, the That's second right. strongest gym in the West. <laughs> We're here today with Silent Mike, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a hand for Silent Mike. He's been doing fantastic lately. I oh, don't know, never mind. We're here today with Chris Duffin, former world record holder in the squat, but a bunch of bastards stole his squat record from him. Damn but Chris is, on a <laughs> Chris is on a mission to teach the world how to lift, and he's here today to teach us how to lift. He's going to show us the sumo deadlift and the conventional deadlift. We got Fat Dan, formerly known as Fat Dan. And we got Filipino Thunder in the mix. So we got some different body types doing some different lifts. Chris is going to take us through it. Why should we be deadlifting? Thank you. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think the deadlift is a, uh, a risky move. Maybe it should be avoided. And you know what I say to that? I say, bullshit. That's what I say to that. Uh, Imagine. Hey, I'm going to hurt my back, though. Yeah, <laughs> you throw your back out, and now you're trying to take the groceries in to the house, and, uh, you know, your wife's got to take them in because you might, it, it's hurting you, right? Or let's, let's take the other thing. You're a 65-year-old grandmother, and, uh, and you're trying to pick up your granddaughter off the floor, but you're stressing out because you're worried about it hurting your back, right? I mean, this is, this is life stuff. This is, this is important shit. You need to know how to handle and pick up loads off the floor. I mean, it is simple. This is, a, this is a human proposition that you must know how to do. So it is incredibly important. And the people I work with, I mean, especially the clinicians and stuff, you get a client with uh, back pain, it's the first thing you do. Teach them to deadlift. And they're going to walk out, and they may be, like I said, maybe that 65-year-old grandmother with tears running down their eyes. Not because they hurt, but the fact that they know that they can go pick up that grandbaby they couldn't. Hey, I'm right there with the 65 so. year old woman. I've cried many times over deadlifts. So you want to talk me through it or do you want to show me how to do it? How do you normally do it when you coach? I'm going to talk through it first, then we'll, then we'll coach through it. So first thing, we're going to cover both the conventional and the sumo and we're going to coach them with the exact same set of cues. So I think that's important. We're going to coach them with the exact same set of cues. And there's a lot of ways to roam. You know, I'm not going to say that this is the only way to deadlift. It is not, but we, it's really important to, to understand that this is a very repeatable and coachable method. What about and what Ed Cohn says? We got to follow what he says. Well, we'll make some, some Ed Cohn stuff too. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, 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 I so I'm just thinking of all the comments that pop up. Like, oh, Ed Cohn does it this way, and this guy does it that way, and that guy does it this way. There's a lot of different, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Right. There's a lot of different ways. But like I said, it's, it's important at the end of the day that we have some certain things taken care of, that we've got the hips in the right position, that we've got the tension in the right area, that we've got the right postural position. And so here's my method for how to coach that and create that. There we go. So um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so right. one, of the, one of the important things we want to make sure is that we've got neutral spine position, okay? So we wanna have neutral spine position all the way through into the head. The head becomes less important. Some people really crank it back. Uh, we're gonna avoid that. We're gonna keep you know, right in here, okay? We wanna have tightness against the bar when we do that. So a lot of people, they'll walk up and just hit that bar cold. And if you start loading a whole bunch of weight on there, as soon as you do that, you're gonna cr start creating acceleration somewhere and usually we end up rounding in the lumbar. So we wanna right. avoid that. We wanna have tension first. We wanna have good bracing. If you wanna talk bracing, I did a great video with Mike last year on uh, squatting. There you go. So we've, you know, we covered bracing, we covered rooting, all this stuff. So we're just gonna focus on the specific cues to get you dialed yeah, on squat. Lift. If, if you need to, 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 to address those, watch those videos. We just covered it in a podcast earlier today. You there can, you go. You can, uh, you can go out. through that, or you can go to my website, uh, kabuki.ms, if you want some really in-depp stuff on that. The portal. Gonna, the portal. The portal. The portal. Portal. But we're gonna go through five cues. Sumo and conventional. So the first thing that I like to do is make sure that we've got tension on the bar before we start. If we create tension, it's allow us to get in the best hip position possible. Right. So we want our hips high as possible and as deep as far, deep this way as possible, but not so high that it becomes a, a stiff leg dead with, or we create this big lever on the low back. Gotcha. So there's a balance there. So 
uh, what we're going to do is just walk up to the bar like we're going to do a stiff-legged deadlift. And we're going to create some tension. Boom. I'm going to act like I'm going to pick it up. Okay? Tension. Here, click. I'm going to keep that. Okay? Now I've got that tension basically between my shoulder and the floor. Then I'm going to brace. Okay? So now I've got a nice rigid core. Round number two. Yep. So pull up. Bend over at the waist. Pull up on the bar. Brace. Now pull the hips in. You're going to drive them in and deep and never letting go of that tension. Okay? Then, right as you're about ready to deadlift, we need to integrate the last element of creating this nice rigid spine. So it's in neutral position. He likes to touch me a lot. We've braced. We've got to cue this lat hard. We're not going to retract and pull shoulder blades back or anything like that, but you're going to create a rigidity. So if you watch from the side here, you'll see boom, boom. See him crank hard. Right. Pulling that, kind of closing the space at the Pulling back. together, Like pick popping. Yeah, yeah, except we don't want to. Oh, no pick the, popping. We don't want to <laughs> lose the postural position here. Right. So we're just creating rigidity. We're not retracting. We're just, there we go. It's more, yep, right there. Trying to shove your oh. shoulders downward. Oh. Down, yep, exactly. How do we explain that? But we're not going to actually <laughs> like retract okay. like yeah. this per gotcha. se. We're just making it incredibly rigid right. and tight and depressing as much as we can here. I love depression. Good times for a change. So if you've got enough tension, as you get down, this is very, very last thing that you want to do. If you create too much tension in other areas first, you'll, you'll end up rounding in the spine. So this is the last piece. We want to, we want to create this stability first, right. then go here. This will almost feel like it breaks the bar off the ground as you do it. All right. Okay. Then from there, we punch the hips through. That's what we're best at. Yeah. Yeah. A little boop. Yep. So we want to think about wedging. So now we've dropped in position. We want to think about wedging our hips under the bar, really gotcha. in the setup and through the lift. You don't want to think about lifting the bar, but wedging through to complete. You want the bar to move the least amount possible, actually. So, so I'm going to demonstrate it all really quick here. Boom. This is the conventional pull. Obviously, conventional pull, you know, feet inside of arms. Arms are straight down. Boom. Pull up. Brace. Pull in, last, boom, and drive through. Sumo pull, same thing, except feet are outside of legs, bend over at the waist, pull up, drive in, last, drive through. You see, I can't even set up with this weight, it's coming off the ground. Right, right, it's starting to uh, float. Yep. So a good pull isn't going to happen until you've got, you know, a few hundred pounds on the bar. Right. You actually can't set up properly. But this creates, as you can see, very neutral, rigid spine. Everything is right where we need to do, and all we now we've got to focus on is driving those hips through. Is that kind of a through. goal? Is it a, is it a goal to try to make the weight float a little bit? Is that something you have people practice, or it just happens because they're getting so rigid and so tight? Once you add a little weight, the weights will stay connected to the ground. The bar gotcha. will bend a little bit. Gotcha. So we should never, at the start of the lift, you know somebody's always let loose. They maybe do all those things, and right when they go to pull, you go, yeah, you'll still hear the... Right. Right. That will never, never happen. You've got to... They've lost tension. Not going not gonna to be in set up correctly. Right. So. Gotcha. So, Mark, on All to right. you. Here we go. He made it look so damn easy. Don't jack this up. Just bend over at the oh. waist. Get a hold on the bar. Pull up. <sighs> like you're going to bend over, row it, or stiff leg it. Create some tension. Now, wedge those hips between the shoulder and the bar. And lats, boom, bet you do. Uh, you mentioned breathing after getting a stiff leg position. Uh, I've heard some people, after they get into uh, rhythm of their pull, will breathe at the top. What are your thoughts on that? If you're talking repetition, that's fine. Uh, I mean so, uh, before you grab the bar, not repetition, even okay. single. So that is fine. Um, I do it because uh, I have trouble getting my breath and keeping it from the bend over position. Yeah, what we yeah. don't want to do is we don't want to wait till our hips are all the way in and stabilized. Yeah, kind of like us. So uh, it just depends on how long you can hold it. I'm trying to minimize the amount of time. So I'm doing it the latest point possible before I drive in. Makes sense. So you could do it up here. Yeah, That's yeah. totally fine. Uh, it just means you got to hold it longer. I didn't want to break up your five rules, but I know some no, people it's do just that. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to clear things up a little bit, sometimes with a belt on, this makes the whole thing a little bit more challenging yeah. sometimes, makes it more challenging sometimes to get your air. And when you're big and you're thick, like Chris is there, 
You um, called me fat. You yeah. called me fat. When you're fat, <laughs> like Chris, um, it's hard to get your air. And so what he's talking about is he does it with his legs straight right before he goes. While other people, like Mike is pointing out, sometimes they'll breathe at the top. You're saying either way is acceptable as it, long as you got those it, other it's rules. As long as before you drive the hips in with this setup. Like Makes I said, sense. You know, I'm not, uh, there's other ways to deadlift. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this gets us, if we use this as a sequence together, it gets us everything that we want accomplished. And it's very coachable, very repeatable. Do you have a preference breathing through the nose or breathing through the mouth? Um, no, I don't. Yep. Either way, whatever works yep. for somebody. Let me try the sumo. What I liked about what you said so far is there wasn't a ton of, there wasn't a ton of specifics. It was just rules. Yep. Here's the five rules. You didn't say, oh, your feet need to be this far apart or they need to be this close together or your hands need to be here. You said, you know, conventional, your hands are outside. Uh, sumo, your hands are inside. You didn't say, like, you got to point your feet out 37 degrees or you didn't have any weird, you know, thing like yep. that. It was just, just a list of rules. These which are the, I very, like. yeah, the very basic and straightforward approach. We're working with somebody we might refine, a, right, you course. know, some minor stuff. Well, it'll depend on um, them, but man. Yeah, yeah. That's going to depend person to person. I feel like that's uh, what some people may focus too much on. It is. Yeah. Yep. Pull up. Draw edge of the hips in. Lats. There we go. Pull up on that bar. Wedge those hips in. More. There we go. Mike sometimes will get a little roundy through here. Do you have any advice for some of that? Yeah. There's a lot of... That lap will help uh, take out that uh, rounding in the lower thoracic. Right. That thoracic lumbar junction. Now, a real key to this, a real key component to the whole thing, though, is to do this over and over again throughout a training cycle, right? Absolutely. You're not just going to, like, take this, these five tips and these five rules. Sometimes you can notice <laughs> an increase in strength, but you're really going to notice the biggest increase in strength when you follow these five rules for a period of time, correct? Yeah. And it, it, it's hard to think about. I try to have, like, all our queuing into, like, the least number of rules possible or cues to get what we want. Because even five, yeah. that's like a mind fuck when you walk up. It's like, what, oh, I missed one. Uh, you know, it's like, it needs to be, <laughs> you need to be, get to the point where you don't have to You forgot the about third it. rule. Yeah. That this Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Remember it takes that? practice. Repeat. Twins, anybody? Oh, I promised some cone. <laughs> I promised some cone, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, we talked about the hips being as close to the bar as possible. And we talked about wedging. Um, if you want to step back, I'll, uh, I'll show you. Ed Cohn, 901 pound deadlift at 220 pounds. The man. The goat. So, let's say we do everything exactly God the same. God rest your soul, Eddie. Pull up, drive in, wedge, wedge, wedge. And it's the scooch. One leg, then the other. Wedge in just a little bit ah. tighter. The scooch. The scooch. The scooch. <laughs> scooch your gooch. Wow. Yes. He never shared that with us, that yeah. motherfucker. What yeah. He's holding back. Wow, what a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm going to have to call him up. But How? you're basically driving one leg out. And then the other one out, just trying to drive in a little bit. One just at a time. Wet, just get those hips in just a little bit tighter. How critical is it for um, someone to have their back flat? You know, we hear a lot about, you know, rounded back deadlifts. And then also, there's got to be some play when you get to 99% of your max yeah. or 95% of your max. Uh, what's your thoughts on the Speaking of the, flat? the goat, there is a picture going around online, you know, and he's a little turnt more than yeah. you might think. You know, it's not picture perfect lines, right? The human right. body isn't even made in straight lines per se well um my view on that <laughs> uh and uh one of those is look at a lot of the big deadlifters and they have a huge amount of mass on their back right. so even your picture may not be reality what you think is the spine may be hypertrophy um yeah, what i found point. is if we cue everything correctly like mike blamed his clothes one time for had it around his back <laughs> we, can get to, uh, we can get to a neutral position to maintain it. And this is where I talk about the lap being really integral. Right. So if we lose just a little bit there, we'll end up with that little bit of rounding through the lift. And if we take that out and get better engagement, we'll see an improvement in position. I've had a lot of people say, oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not neutral, I'm rounded. Right. But if you want to look at my, my erectors, I mean, it's like a couple inches before you even get to my spine. Right. So... They're just going to be sticking out anyway. They're sticking no out. No matter what the hell you do. It's doing. really hard to actually see what right. it is doing. Let's have a few of these other guys jump in here so we can see what they look like when they do it. Don't want to wash your hands. He's always super uh, explosive off the ground. Yep. Slow it down. And we're just going to coach you on this, see what we can do, okay? Sure. So, the 235, he's, he's, you, don't he's a mess. Show, I apologize. you don't have to show me how explosive <laughs> you are, okay? Sure. All right, so 
Bend over at the waist. Another dude asking you to bend over yeah. again. All right, pull up on that bar. Drive those hips in. Okay. A little bit more. More here. There, now go. You guys see his back position? Way different. And that was, did you see the very, very minor change in shoulder? There, now go. The very, it's like moving a quarter of an inch that last little bit, but that dramatically changed this structure right here. So right here, the weights are coming off the ground a little bit. When he has um, a, a, little bit, a little bit more weight on there, what's gonna move? His hips will drop a little bit more, the bar will bend a little the bit more? The bar will bend. Okay. The bar will bend. That's a great way to warm up with this weight. How much do you deadlift? Yeah, that, he gets over five. As <laughs> soon as he gets over like 550, the bar, that's where his deadlift is going from. So why would he be training two different deadlifts? Right. Cool. Uh, Chris, you have a preference with how tight you wear your belt or where you wear your belt? You um, coach people on like when they should put it on or anything like that? Not really. Uh, you know, I've gone Personal from, preference type deal? Yeah. I mean, I like to do uh, a fair bit of pulling with no belt. I'm not big on maxing out for ego purposes without a belt. Right. Um, you know, some people like to and have PRs there, not right. a risk reward just for me, you know. You'd I rather do some training there though, just so you yep. are training. So I may work up to five, 600 pounds before I throw a belt on. Gotcha. Um, tightness, again, same thing. You don't want it so tight that it becomes uh, restrictive where it sucks you in because then you can't actually brace appropriately. You can't push out against yep. it. I think that's super common. People yeah. think the belt's gonna like uh, wrap their the, spine. The, the belt is the stabilization, it is not. Yeah. So now it's, we talked about in our podcast that outer, sh it, that outer sheath, right. right? This is again an outer sheath, makes it even more rigid gotcha. because we're not having the muscle, but you're gonna drive out and push against it all, say the, the, uh, all the way around. I'd say the belt's almost more for your stomach than it is for your lower back in a way. Absolutely. Because that's what you're yeah. trying to, you're trying to just, use uh, it, it, it through is, your stomach. It is all the way around. It's what for about, this. It's for the it's whole for torso. The, yeah, exactly. What about belt placement? Um, I prefer to have I prefer to have the belt uh, across the obliques. Okay, so kind of so, I guess it'll yeah. depend. On I know the, some people wear them up yeah, higher. Yeah. I guess it depends on how long you are or whatever, but maybe about yeah. around your belly button. Yeah, basically about. around the belly button, right where those obliques are, uh, is the best best spot. So. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, I, I've never worn it high. I know a few people do wear them really high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a preference, yeah. right? Uh, do you have a preference in terms of you know each person? is gonna have a certain ability to be able to take their, their kind of chest and torso and be able to kind of angle it upward. For me, it's very difficult for me to like, you know, try to deadlift and, and be kind of almost like here. See, some people can drop their, they can drop their butt down so much and kind of squat it up. Do you have yeah, a preference on where someone's torso should be when they're pulling? That's really gonna be individual biomechanics. I mean, all we can do as control is try to keep our weight behind that bar yet that lever as close to the bar as possible. So we want this bar just kind of grazing in here. And as long as it's doing this and we've got good hip position, you know, you're going to, if somebody's got, you know, four inch longer arms yeah. than me, they're going to be here, right? And I'm going to be here. Ladies That's, and gentlemen, that is a sign of somebody that's been coaching people for a very long time. He's not trying to, he doesn't have a magic wand that he can wave over everybody to make them lift the same way. He recognizes that and he's just doing what, He's dealing with what he's got in front of him. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> good. Very good wedge there. Very good wedge all the way through. Nice wedgy. Um, it's more sumo than conventional, but uh, thoughts on when to lock, the, lock your hips and when to lock your knees? Um, this should be almost uh, simultaneous. So we should be rolling here. I see a lot of people They'll want to, so anytime you see somebody, this is a, this is a really good uh, thing to understand. Anytime you see somebody finish back here, they're not engaging their glutes maximally. So earlier in the lift, it's an absolute fact. We have a boy and, named uh, Fat Boy that does that all the time. Yep. Oh, no. so, Maximal glute development so, system. So if we're firing, it, it, they're together and it's going to be boom, right there like this, right? Here means we're using the erectors to pull up over the top of the torso. We don't want to have to pull our, our torso over the top of the hips, okay? We want to be wedging the hips through to complete the lift, not, not doing a, you know, a torso lift. Yeah, and then same so, sumo? Same exact sumo. So you'll see the same thing uh, in the sumo. It's going to look, same thing. It's going to be, they're going to get here and then be doing this, right? 
right. uh, with the, if, they're, if they're firing those glutes late as, as well. Yep. Uh, Chris, give us uh, two or three of your favorite, uh, two or three favorite assistance movements. People always have a lot of questions about that for uh, deadlifting, whether it's conventional or sumo or whatever. One of my favorites is doing rack pulls. But I want to be clear, a lot of people do them not incorrectly, but they do it for the wrong reason. They think that rack pulls are going to help them with their lockout, and it is not. What rack pulls are going to do is exactly what we were talking about earlier, is gaining control over this structure and strengthening strength this, size. okay, so that we don't lose that positioning. If you're, if you're missing a lockout, nearly always I'm going to drive you back to the setup. There's, a, there's something wrong in the setup, and you're usually a very explosive puller off the floor. Right. Right? I get to pick on people too. I hear you're the punching bag. So, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, uh, I'm just jumping right in. I've made but, this uh, comparison. You'll, you'll, you'll end up really explosive off the floor. Right. But if we slow down that setup and, and change the setup, it's going to rebalance the lift and now they won't have trouble locking out because they're going to be in a better position. They're here doing this, right. trying to recorrect the positioning that we never lost to begin with. Right, gotcha. Okay. So rack pulls are a great assistance. I also uh, enjoy doing some deficit work, but very, very small deficit work. I'm talking like one inch, right? So maybe two inches at max. I see a lot of people, more is better, more is better. And so they get off these huge deficits and now they're training something that isn't a deadlift. Doing a completely different move. Doing a different lift, yeah. yeah. And potentially compromising themselves as well at the same time, because usually you'll see them getting in, they pushed it so far that they're compromising, getting in position, rounding, doing other things that, that that are going to potentially put them in, in harm's way. Right. Um, pulling, uh, pulling against chains is another favorite. So um, that I like loading the chain in the center of the bar. There's a couple things to that that people don't realize. I'm actually doing a deficit and doing a rack work at the same time. Gotcha. Because with all the weight loaded in the center bar, the bar not gonna bend is not going to bend. Right. right. And so I'm not getting that nice little, you know, piece at the beginning I'm used to. So I'm, I'm getting you know a one two inch deficit basically, right. and I'm loading the top and I'm training the whole movement. So, right. um, so those are, those are some of my favorites. They're just deadlift variations. And then you mentioned the lats. Is there uh, anything that we can work on, uh, you know, outside of the deadlift to help improve our positioning in the deadlift, help build up the lats kind of the way Absolutely. you're talking about? So what you should do is every time Mike is, uh, uh, Silent Mike here is deadlifting, you should walk over and do his, do his uh, deadlift uh, for bent over rows. It should be. It's the last one. It'll, it'll crush his <laughs> ego, and you'll get stronger and better. So That'll hurt really bad. Mike's getting strong. <laughs> That'll kill. It will. It will. He's probably stronger than he was last year because I did that to him last year. He yeah. probably doesn't remember. But I was very skinny last year. <laughs> he was. <laughs> but uh, bent over rows are uh, another one of my favorites, so right. just for overall development. And, uh, yeah, for the lat development, a, a huge player. And uh, the lats play a big role in all three lifts, but it's not in actually moving the weight. It's actually controlling our position. And uh, that plays a big role in how the lifters perform. You, we were talking <laughs> at that, hit people. <laughs> we were talking at lunch, and you were talking about how like Stan Efferton can't get bent over in the hole on squatting, right? Because he has such a massive upper body structure. Same same thing, right? right? He's so jacked. He is so jacked. Uh, I think that wraps up. You got any more questions for him? That's it. We done or we finished? That's, That's it. it from <laughs> Super Training Gym, <laughs> the second strongest gym in the West. <laughs> Boom. Leave us a like or you're off the team. Leave a comment down below. And if you want to watch other videos from the strongest gym in the West, click right here. If you want the best lifting gear in the game from howmuchyoubench.net, click over here. Right here. <laughs>